Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We're going to have a pairing video today and um, this is our, our Pictura pole crips or commonly known as the golden blue legged baboon. Now although this is a baboon species I find these to be generally pretty pretty subdued. They're quite well behaved really and we don't really get a lot of hassle from them. Um, and the females are just exquisite. Now these guys were really, really sought after only a few year ago, but there's been many more of them being bred now. We've bred them here in the Beastie Room before, um, and we come around to breed them again now. We've got a couple of females, and um, this is the first one in a few that we're gonna be doing. So um, we've got a decent little bit of footage. It's not a very long video, this one. It's quite a short video. I think the whole action of the pairing took something like about seven minutes. Um, there was a bit of mucking around when we first put the male in. He seemed more intent on climbing out than doing anything. And then eventually we, uh, we got him to actually go down onto the floor rather than climbing down the glass. We put him actually on the floor. And once he got a hold of that web in there, he would have picked up them pheromones and you'll see he started scratching away straight away with his pedipalps. And, uh, and before we knew it, he was going in and he literally pulled her out of her burrow. So um, this is one of the, the advantages of um, using the 20 by 20 by 20 Komodo cubes. And I use these a lot for many of my um, terrestrial adult females. So anything up to the size of sort of Balfouri, these golden blue legs, um, they're fine. That's a perfectly decent size to keep these females in. And it means that we can keep them in there as a single spider, and then we just use that purely as a breeding home. So she can actually find herself nice and secure in there. And it also allows us, because all we do is we just put a piece of bark up against the back of the, the enclosure, um, and then we put our blackout board on that as well. And then what that does then is that gives her the security to hide behind there. She doesn't web it too badly. You know, nine times out of 10, we can see in the back there, especially if we just shine a light in there, we can see, see right in there, which makes it really, really useful for when we're breeding. So this is something to bear in mind when you're keeping your spiders, is to, you know, make, make your enclosures to suit the purpose that you're actually trying to um, achieve with your spider. And uh, you'll see it's a very, very basic, very simple type of setup. So then, without further ado, let's pop over and let's see these guys in action. They really are pretty cool. I'll see you in a moment. Well, here's our little male. After a little bit of running around and uh, generally mucking around and not showing too much interest, he spent most of his time on the sides of the glass. Now we've put him down directly on the soil on that little bit of web in there and that is in actual fact the entrance to a burrow just at the back and you can see there that he's starting to scratch around. There's a bit of interest coming from him now. We've had the odd shake out of him. There you go, them tiny tiny little vibrations, more scratching, these are all sending signals to our female. Now she's in the back there in that tunnel and she is in actual fact facing the entrance to the tunnel. And she's about halfway back. And so far we have not seen a single sign from her. Now you can see the male there, he's, um, he's got very, very similar colouring to the female but the blue on the legs is nowhere near as strong. He's also fractionally smaller than her as well. As is quite often the case with many of the males, they are much lighter built, built for speed. Here he goes. Now you can see there that once he's actually picked up the pheromones, you've realized what's going on, what he's there for. You see, quite often in the males, a change in character. And this is where our, our male becomes a little bit more determined and a bit more focused on the job in hand. Now he sat here for quite some time debating the situation. You can see there he's got a gentle sway on him. 
little bit of a shake, a bit more scratching with the pity pups there. She is just inside that entrance. Still no sign of her. At least she's not come rushing out. Wouldn't it be fantastic to know what is going on in his mind? Now you can see there as he moves, he shakes at the same time. You can clearly see the uh, the hooks on them front legs. Here he goes. He's a bit more committed now. This is a time where we um, we get ready to act just in case. But generally speaking, it's best to let our spiders sort themselves out. Quite often or not, us interfering, trying to save them, can, if you're not careful, actually put them in more jeopardy than it would have been if you'd left them alone. Here he goes. He's going in. Now, I would imagine, knowing how far in she is, he has probably made contact with her already. He won't want to stay in there. That's a very tight area in which to um, put oneself. And he's backed up a little bit. I would suggest she's on the move. Here she comes. There's them first feet. You notice how he's maintaining contact with her? Look at that. She is an absolute beauty. Look at the steely blue on them legs. They almost look like armoured plating. And he's straight in there. You see that? He's lifted her up. She was very, very receptive. She was almost halfway up as she was coming out. And you can see there, he's working away there now. You notice how she's just dangling those front legs over. Her pedipalps are just hanging there. She is putty in his hands. Oh, nearly lost his foot in there. She is a bit of a big lass to be uh, waking up like that. You see how he's holding on with a second pair of legs? There you go, look. You see her abdomen drop down then. Now when he's gone still like this, he's actually inseminating her now. When you see the frantic waving of the pedipalps, he's actually searching for the epigastric furrow. But when he's gone still like this, he will be inseminating. Now we've come down onto the side arm view and we can see there a clear insemination. See that pedipalp there? See the way he's rocking it from side to side? Now we're going to swap. We're going to use the other one. See how he's using his second leg to actually grip her? You can see the toes when he grips the leg. There you go, we're inseminating now. And you can see just by that constant steady motion that we have a good insemination. Now, so he's used both pedipalps and now we're breaking away. And he's almost got all legs off the floor there. Quite incredible. Here we go. Now we're starting to break away. Note how he keeps contact there. That one leg over her fang. See that look? And she's held on with one leg as well. And you can see how they break away now. You can clearly see him hold her with one leg. And he's out. Interesting note here. Always allow your male to just come out and venture out. Don't be in a rush to catch him. You're better off to letting him settle down because if you dive in to try and catch him, you may spook him straight back into the enclosure, into the waiting arms of that lovely, gorgeous blue leg baboon in the bottom there. And she's still in that stance. She remained in this stance for around about 15 minutes or so. She was completely and utterly 
dazed. And she just stayed like this. Something we often see with our Balfouris. Most other spiders will hold this position for a little while and then they move. But these in the Balfouris, it's almost like they've gone asleep. Well, that was a successful pairing. And we probably won't bother repeating this one. We'll leave them to it. Well, what did you think? Like I said, it didn't take him long. Once he was actually on the floor, and that video pretty much started from when he hit the deck. So as soon as he was down there, we were rolling. Now, we don't tend to edit our, our videos here in the Beastie Room at all, really. Uh, the only ones that we do edit are the breeding ones. And this is purely because we get quite a bit of time goes by where nothing's happening or the males on walkabout. You know, there's nothing really to document. So we cut them all out. We edit it all out and we get it right down to a viewable piece of film. And, uh, and hopefully we can keep it that way where we just keep the action going and uh, keeps you guys interested. You don't want to see a spider sitting in the same spot for 20 minutes. You know, it's a pointless exercise. So we edit our breeding videos and we just put in the information and the, the, um, the, the viewing that we think is, is going to be useful for the video. So as you would have seen there, that female, when she came out, she's quite a bit bigger than the male. Uh, and the colouring, that's almost like a steel blue on her legs. They're absolutely beautiful. These really are a lovely, lovely spider. And I would even say so much, I would put them in the same lines as the Balfouri in terms of temperament. I, th I find them really easy. I've not had a bad one yet. Um, they've all been pretty good. So I would class them as an intermediate spider. So if you can, if you can deal with your Balfouris and things, you'll deal with one of these no problem at all. And they're very similar to breed, like the Balfouri. They've, they've got very similar traits. You would have seen there with a the female that once she'd actually been paired, the male broke away and she just stayed there in that stance, that hypnotic stance. And this is something that the Balfouris often do. Another thing that they, they mimic the Balfouri for is if we put a male in on a second time, you would have seen the footage there. He was successful. He had a successful insemination. If we put him in a second time, quite often our female will rush the male. She will try and grab him. And this is straight off the bat. And we found that with our uh, female Balfouri, they're very much the same as well. If they've had a successful insemination, they will chase that male out. They don't want to know. They're not interested in any further courtship whatsoever. So they let their feelings be known and the male does the off pretty smartish. So often or not, we found with these guys, we only need to do the one pairing and then we can literally put the label on the, in the enclosure and put her on the shelf and we just forget about her then. And normally within around about two months, she's produced a sack. Now, again, the other similarity that we see with the golden blue leg baboon and the Balfouri is they both make a hammock style uh, egg sack. So they don't carry this egg sack around. What they do is they lay it down on the floor and when they build it, they hang it just off the floor. And then it's just caused like a hammock. And quite often or not, these can be missed. If you're not 100% sure of what you're looking for, they can be missed, especially with the Balfouri because it's entwined with all the other web. But if you look carefully, you will see that that web is slightly different. It's a little bit thicker. There's a slight difference in color texture you can see the hole and then when you start looking properly you'll see that there's there's actually a shape to it as well and this is what tells it apart from all of the rest of the webbing and that female then will just sit and guard that now one thing we have been um, experimenting a little bit with lately with our Balfouris because we had a couple of our female Balfouris at their sacks this year and that's something that we've not had before so what I've done this time with them is I've had one female where I've experimented where I've actually fed her while she's guarding the egg sac. This is something we really do not do. We don't feed our females when they've got egg sacs. But this was something I thought we'd give this a little try. And so far, her egg sac has been fine. And she was one of the ones that ate her previous egg sac. So she's fed and she's also drunk as well at the same time. Now, with the spiders like the Balfouri and possibly these golden blue legs, we can possibly get away with it because they are 
a pretty steady spider. If you've got a really nervous spider, I, I wouldn't suggest trying to feed them or even doing their water. When I've got nervous spiders, what I tend to do is I take away their water bowl and I will put a much, much bigger water bowl in the enclosure. Something that is not going to dry out in the 30 days that it's there for. And I just make sure that that stays filled up. And then that normally, if they're thirsty, they will come out of the night time and they will take a drink. But it's not very often you'll catch them doing this. So, um, you know, we, we have experimented a little bit with spraying our um, enclosures back on the back walls and letting it run down so that it goes down in between where they're actually holding their egg sacs. And we have actually witnessed them drinking off the glass. So thirst is definitely something that, um, that spurs these guys on. You know, maybe a month without a drink is a little bit too long for some of them. And uh, it may be some of the reason in why we lose the odd sack here and there. There's so many questions to be answered. But anyway, back with our golden blue legs. So what we're going to do now is we will, won't bother pairing this one up a second time. We will leave her to it now. And we will just make sure that we feed her up. She's in absolutely superb condition at the moment. So she won't have many meals now. There'll only be a few and there'll only be medium sized meals, just enough to give us some sustenance to produce eggs. Um, we're hoping by the look of her that she's actually producing eggs as we speak. And this is something that's been very interesting to me for some time now, because as with snakes, snakes produce follicles. And when you breed a snake, if you run your finger along the underside, you can feel the follicles within the snake and you can count them. And that'll give you an idea of how many eggs that is going to produce. So I'm wondering if we see a change in the shape of the abdomen on our females. And I think this is where they're in egg production mode. So it's something that's really worth trying out. And I think we, we need to do a little bit more study on that and see where it leads us. Um, I've even toying with the idea now of actually candling our spiders like we would bird's eggs because you can candle up through the abdomen and if it's if it's showing really really yellow it's normally full of eggs so that's another aspect that we can look at it all depends on whether we can do this without stressing our spider out too much so we have to weigh up the pros and cons of different things or is it sometimes best just to wait and see who knows we will see right well i hope you enjoyed that um they really are an impressive spider we do have slings available at the moment um, and hopefully we'll have some more in the future. Fingers crossed. All right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.